direct from Sydney. Jack Benny in Australia. Starring Jack Benny, Johnny O'Keefe, Larray Desmond, the Rodanko Brothers. And here he is, Jack Benny! Do you think they mention my name often enough? <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for this wonderful reception. It's so good that I actually feel like the fifth Beatle. <laughs> now, I must start right off by saying that I have just concluded a three weeks tour, Sydney and Melbourne, and I'm really and truly sorry that I have to go back tomorrow because we've had a most wonderful engagement. And there's been excitement wherever I've been. Like the, the, week, the week or eight, nine days that I played here at the, the Theatre Royal. And in Melbourne, we had a wonderful ten nights in Melbourne. And a lot of people don't know about Australia, but I want to tell you this is actually an exciting place. I think Sydney is very, very exciting. Gosh, I was only here a week and a half, and 10 pounds went like that. You know? <laughs> Next time, I'm coming alone. <laughs> but anyway, I, and, and you know, I did the real tourist bit, too. Wherever I went, you know, I, I, was, I was bound to see everything you could see. And one day, uh, Lord Mayor Harry Jensen, here in town, we got to be very good friends. He took me all around to see it. The first place he took me was to see that new opera house that's going up. Beautiful play. Oh, it, that's going to be beautiful. Of course, it won't be ready to open for two, three months yet. You know? <laughs> And from what I understand, when it's finished, this is going to cost over a hundred thousand pounds. <laughs> They'll never get their money back. I don't know. <laughs> yes, you know. And then I told him, I said, uh, uh, Mayor Jensen, I said, one place I've heard so much about, and I'd love to go there. I want you to take me to Bondi Beach. Heard about Bondi? I've never been there, so he took me there. And I met some of the lifeguards, they call them lifesavers here, you know. And they started to explain to me about the sharks here, which I knew about, you see. And they told me, they explained to me, which is so funny about that when you're all in swimming, you folks are swimming in Bondi, you see. When they see the sharks coming from a distance, they ring a little bell. <laughs> That means you must all get out of the water and give the sharks a chance. <laughs> now, when you feel like going, when the sharks feel like going back, and they all go back, then the lifeguard, you know, rings a second little bell, and then you all go back into the water, of course. I wouldn't go back for a million pounds. <laughs> I'd probably run into a shark who learned how to ring that second bell. <laughs> I'm a coward about those. I remember one night I was taking a bath. I heard somebody ring a bell. I jumped right out of the tub. <laughs> and you know what kills me? The thing that they say there. Absolutely kills me. Here's what the lifeguard told me, the lifesaver. He said, should you run into a shark, Stand perfectly still, <laughs> motionless. Don't alarm the shark. <laughs> well, I assure you, I would not alarm a shark. I'm afraid of anything with a receding chin. <laughs> but anyway, I must say I had a wonderful time and I'm glad that I'm here. 
I had a wonderful flight to Sydney. Now, some people are nervous when they fly, but not me. I slept right up to the last minute. <laughs> Now, back home, I had heard so much about the Sydney Harbor Bridge, I just had to see it for myself. And then, after a bit of sightseeing, I decided it was time that I checked into a hotel. <laughs> overlooking the beautiful Menzies Hotel, which I thought was better than paying the Menzies prices and overlook the dump I'm living in. <laughs> well, so much for that. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you in a few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, the Radenko Brothers. being a wonderful audience. We'd like to do a trick we had the pleasure of doing with the Broadway musical Carnival. We certainly hope that you will enjoy it. We call it the blindfolded leapfrog. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, when I first came on, I was talking about the wonderful stay and the fun I had here in Australia. I, uh, incidentally, I just found out it was pronounced Australia. But I, uh, <laughs> I didn't know, you see. But I, um, 
I forgot to mention the beautiful flight that I had coming in here and also going from here to Melbourne, you know, and I stopped in Honolulu and Fiji and just had a wonderful trip all the way through. But the cutest thing that happened after I arrived in Sydney, you see, and then when I flew to Melbourne, the cutest thing that happened, just as I was flying over Melbourne, all the lights went on in Perth. <laughs> I think they only did that for one other person, I believe. <laughs> a fella named Glenn somebody. <laughs> somebody Glenn, I don't know. Somebody that flew around, I don't know. Somebody like that. Now, I'm going to uh, tell in this spot, uh, there's a story I want to tell. And as a rule, I don't tell stories. I just ramble along and talk. But this is someone you, something you might enjoy. This is a story about a panhandler who was arrested for being drunk. Now, a lot of people uh, in Australia, they don't know the term panhandler. It means uh, some kind of a parasite or a, bur uh, uh, a beggar on the street, you see. And this panhandler was arrested for being drunk, and he was brought in court in front of a judge. The judge fined him and sent him back home. And the next day, the same panhandler got drunk again, brought in front of the same judge. The judge admonished him, sent him back. And this happened five days in a row. This panhandler kept getting drunk brought in front of the same judge, and finally the judge couldn't stand it any longer, you see. And he said to this panhandler, he says, look, aren't you ashamed to be seen in this courtroom so often? Ladies really? and gentlemen, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, so this panhandler, you are such a wonderful audience uh, during our act. <laughs> My brother and I, you know, we got so excited, we forgot to do our encore. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so with your kind permission, we, we'd like to do it now if we may, right? Uh, well, for, for this trick, uh, for this trick, we need a volunteer. Uh, oh, anybody, anybody will do, huh? Let's see, uh, uh, you, sir? <coughs> no, you don't. Uh, you, sir? You, sir? Uh, what about him? Oh, yes, oh, yeah. sir. Oh, yes, sir. He'll do real good. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He'll do just fine. All right. Yeah, All right. Mm -hmm. you ready? Mm -hmm. you ready? Mm -hmm. ready? So this panhandler, <laughs> he said, why should I be? He said, this is a respectable place. That's the end of the joke. <laughs> Actually, you know, it does, goes over much better when people don't come in in the middle of it. <laughs> uh, and now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before I introduce my co-star, uh, one of my co-stars, I'd like to do something that so many people have asked me to do in Australia, both in Sydney and Melbourne. They say to me, Jack, you know, we've been watching your television shows, and you never play anything on your violin. You always take your violin, you fool around. We have yet to hear you finish a number. So, uh, I promised them, they told me, would you please do it on this television show? So with your approval, I'll get my violin and play it, you know? Could I? Could I have my violin, please?
that's his opinion. You know? <laughs> well, I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, I doubt that Isaac Stern could play it now. You know? <laughs> I promise you that later on in the show, I'm actually going to get my own violin and play a number for you. And now, I would like to present one of my co-stars, a young lady I heard so much about from here in Aust from Australia, very, very talented, very beautiful, your own Loray Desmond. <laughs> I meant every word I said. I'm so happy that you're with me on this show and through the whole engagement. Now, um, let me ask you something. Uh, I didn't watch a rehearsal, you see. What are you going to uh, sing? What is your number? What's the number you're going to do? Well, I thought I'd do Great Day. Great Day. Now, I'd like to ask you something. And this, you're on your own. You know, I don't want to interfere with your act or anything like that. And you can say yes or no. But do you think it would add anything to your number if I got the violin, because I know the number, you see, and I played a sort of an obligato to it. Would it mean anything to that particular song, I mean? Well, Jack, that's, that's very sweet of you to suggest it. Uh, but you see, the number's all rehearsed, and I, I think the added violin would only conflict with the arrangement. I see. You mean you'd rather sing it alone, you mean, with that? Well, it was just a, you know, a suggestion, that's all. <laughs> Maybe, you know, thanks anyway for even considering it, you know. <laughs> Maybe we'll do it some other time, huh? Thanks again very much. <laughs> Gonna be a great day. 
way. Come here, please. You know, I watched you while you were doing this whole... Oh, let's give her a hand. <laughs> Doing that song and dance, and I thought you were wonderful. Of course, you're, I think you're always wonderful. You know? Oh, thank you very much, Jack. You know, I want to ask you something. Now, I get nervous sometimes when I appear in front of an audience, uh, particularly so many miles away from home, or it's an opening night or a television show, and I have friends in the audience. That makes me a little bit nervous. But, you know, I watched you work for three solid weeks on our show, and even here, and I don't know, you, it seems to me that you haven't got a, 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 a nerve in your body. Don't you ever get nervous? Certainly, Jack. Of course I get nervous. But you don't show it. Well, I may not show it, but I, I get nervous. And particularly when I'm working on the same stage with America's greatest comedian. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, please. Now, wait a minute. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> and you shouldn't have said it either. I know you meant well, but I, you can imagine calling anybody the world's greatest comedian. Did you say world? America. Oh, America. <laughs> but even then, even then that isn't nice. You know, people don't, you know, you'll have people hating me before the television show is over. I mean, America's greatest comedian. How egotistical can we get, for heaven's sakes? But, Jack, you are America's greatest comedian, aren't you? Well, yes. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds so awful coming from us, I think. You know. <laughs> what are you going to do now? Mind you, our three weeks are over. Here's the television show. What are you going to do when we're through here? Well, Jack, I'm going to have a little short holiday, and then I'm going back to work again. Yeah. Well, so am I. I have to go back and do some more television films. And what do you think I'm going to do in a few months? I'm going to make a picture. You know, I haven't made a picture since the horn blows at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they're laughing at? That one lousy picture I made, <laughs> which they'll never forgive me for. But I've made some good ones. However, I am going back, do a couple of films, and then I'm going to do a picture with Doris Day. And you want to hear something? They sent me the script. I just got it about three days ago. And the picture is so, the part for me is so exciting. You've, you've never read anything like it. Right at the very start of the picture, just as it opens, I'm found dead in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> then, of course, the whole picture revolves around my death, you see, I mean, it's only a day's work, but it's exciting. <laughs> and you know what? I'm making him change the story a little bit, because when I'm found dead, I'm found lying face down. <laughs> Naturally, you know, nobody will know who I am. You know? <laughs> so I'm making them turn me over. <laughs> see, if I'm lying face down, the only one who would recognize me would be my masseur. <laughs> waiting for that one. <laughs> but listen, you know, I want to ask you something. You're a lovely lady. You probably could answer this. Um, why is it in all branches of show business, I've done very, very well, and yet there was something about me on the screen that wasn't right, even though I made good pictures. There was something wrong. There was something I didn't have for the movie screen, you know? I didn't have that, uh, that, oh, what am I, what am I trying to say? Sex appeal? I had that. <laughs> I still have it if you want to know something. Our day isn't over yet. You know. <laughs> but, um, you know, as long as you mention sex appeal, let me tell you something. You know that sex appeal is actually a state of mind. That's all it is. Just sex appeal is a state of mind. You know? You're kidding. I'm kidding? Oh, wait a minute. You wanted me to say something after that, and I can't think of the word. <laughs> right. Right. Huh? Oh, yeah. All right, now repeat. You say you're kidding. You're kidding. 
fair binkum. <laughs> Fair dinkum. <laughs> it's not fair binkum, it's fair, <laughs> fair dinkum. That's right. Oh, yeah, that sounds so much better. Than that. <laughs> That's the silliest word I've ever heard in my life. But do you know, as I said before, sex appeal. <laughs> fair dinkum. Sex appeal, as I said, is a state of mind, has something to do with environment, atmosphere. You know, I can prove that to you. How? Oh. Now, look, I want you to close your eyes and forget that I'm Jack Benny, you see? Now, close your eyes and think of me as someone else standing in front of you, like a glamour boy, like Rock Hudson or Gregory Peck or Tony Curtis, you see? And I'll kiss you. And while your eyes are closed, I'll kiss you. And while you're thinking of them, my kiss and theirs, it'll be the same thing. <laughs> Will you do it? Now, I want to prove to you. All right. Now, close your eyes and kiss me. Like this? That's right. Now, think of some glamour boy. <laughs> now, how was that? I don't know. I didn't feel a thing. That's funny. I'm a wreck. <laughs> I mean, who are you thinking of? Red Skelton. <laughs> Jack, who are you thinking of? What? Who are you thinking of? Sophie Tucker. <laughs> I don't know how I got that way, but I guess... Oh, Jack, you know I was only kidding. Really? I like you very, very much, and, and you know I do. You do? Would you like to know how I, how I really feel about you? Yes. Once on the show, I said no, and she didn't know what to say next. <laughs> Never saw anybody get so mixed up in my life. <laughs> yes. I want you to tell me what. what well, is it all right if I sing it to you? It's fine if you sing it. Why this feeling? this glow why the thrill when you say hello it's a strange and tender magic you do mr Much more I could say, but the world <laughs> keeps slipping away, <laughs> and I'm
Ladies and gentlemen, and now it gives me great pleasure to introduce a young fellow with a lot of talent who also comes from here. In the short span of five years, he has become a legend in Australia. Johnny O'Keefe. <laughs> Down this street before, but the pavement always stayed beneath my feet before. Oh, it was in my sad story time, going down on the street where you live. Oh, the lilac trees in the heart of town. Can you hear a lark in any other part of town? Enchantment pour out of every door. No, it's just on the street where. tonight. Thank it you. felt like it, didn't it? Yes, I sure did. Thank you very much, Mr. Benny. Listen, Johnny, let me ask you something. How long have you been in show business? Uh, about five years now, Mr. Benny. About five years. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I've been in it practically all my life. I can't remember when I wasn't in it, but you're a very talented young fellow. Thanks, Mr. Benny. That's a wonderful compliment coming from you because uh, even though, you know, over the last three weeks on the tour, you've been clowning around a lot and cracking jokes with me. Uh, no matter how much you clowned around with Larry Desmond, you're still my idol. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let's not go into that again. Uh, Mr. Benny, I what? mean it. I mean every word I'm saying. I watch your television show every week, and every time I see you, I feel like sort of I'm watching a real master at work, a true genius. Well, now, Johnny, now you're embarrassing me, you know. Sorry, Mr. Benny, I won't go on. No, no. <laughs> you know, after all, the damage is done. <laughs> what were you saying? I would say yeah. exactly what I sincerely feel. You're my idol, Palsy, and I would never miss your television show. You mean you see, you watch all my shows, huh? Everyone. And Mr. Benny, uh, would you mind if I made a few little suggestions to you? <laughs> you want to make some suggestions? Yeah. Well, some constructive criticism. I see. How long did you say you were in show business? Five years. Five years. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, what are these uh, suggestions that you want to make? Yeah. Well, there's one thing, Mr. Benny, and I'm sure that it could be very easily corrected. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> what? What, for instance? Well, it's your pace. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly right. Now, it's a little bit too slow, just a little bit. <laughs> you mean you don't like... You don't, how long did you say you weren't show business? <laughs> Five years. Five years, I see. And you say you don't like my timing, is that it? Well, let me put it to you this way. I guess it's all right to be slow sometimes, but you're only telling jokes, you know. You're not playing a game of chess. <laughs> Have 
Have you any other suggestions? Uh, well, I mean, don't keep anything from your idol. <laughs> what else? Well, Mr. Benny, there, there is one thing. What? It's that long, vacant stare you always give to the audience. It sort of goes on and on and on. You mean after I get through with a joke, the way yeah. I kind of gaze and stare at an yeah. audience? Huh? I always get the impression that you're amazed that they're still there. <laughs> You've been in show business five, five years. <laughs> well, is there anything else? Well, Jack. Jack! <laughs> what happened to Mr. Benny? Or... <laughs> well, yes. Well, <laughs> I think if I'm still allowed to, I'd like to sing an encore. <laughs> what are you going to sing for your encore, Johnny? Well, I'd, I'd like to do a song that's been uh, pretty popular for me called uh, She Wears My Ring. She Wears My Ring. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you something. Would you like if I got my violin <laughs> and accompanied you on that number? Would you like that? Well, uh, I don't know quite how to say it, Mr. Benny. I mean, it's the end of the show and all that, but I'd prefer you didn't. <laughs> well, for someone who didn't know how to say it, you phrased it beautifully. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to be able to introduce to you in person the world's most frustrated violinist. Once again, Jack Betty. You know, he's the kind of a guy that makes me glad we won the Davis Cup. <laughs> Well, I told you I was going to bring out the violin finally. Now, here's a violin. This, of course, is not the one that was thrown out on the stage. This violin has been in our family for years and years and years. My great-grandfather gave it to my grandfather. My grandfather gave it to my father. And my father sold it to me. <laughs> He was meaner than I am, incidentally. That's right. 
Now, um, you know, I give concerts in America, and I think uh, I'm going to play a little encore from one of the, some of the concerts that I do. Oh, uh, Tommy, let's do the Chartist one, the thing. All right? Sorry to bother you, Mr. Benny, but may I have your autograph, please? You mean you came out of the audience for the autograph? Yes, I did. Well, darling, I'm right in the middle of a number. I could have, I could have given it to you after the show, you know. Oh, okay, Mr. Benny. Well, wait a minute, as long as you're here, come here, I'll give it to you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right, I'll write the... Wait a minute, this is awkward. Hold this a little bit, will you? Be careful, you're not supposed to touch the hair, you know. Be careful, it's a good violin, too. What's your name, your first name, honey? Tony. Tony. Yes. That's a cute name for a girl, Tony. How old are you, Tony? I'm 15, Mr. Benny. 15 years old, gosh. I could be your father. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tony, with love, Jack Benny. There you are. Thank you very much, Mr. Benny. You're welcome, honey. Thank you. Kind of cute. <laughs> again, Mr. Benny, but you spell Tony wrong. I spell Tony wrong? Yes. When Tony's a girl's name, it's spelled with an I, and when it's a boy's name, it's spelled with a Y. Oh, and I spell it with a Y, huh? No, with two E's. <laughs> well, all right, here, I'll write it Thank over you. again. I'll just change the word Tony, here. Hold this again. Be careful now, don't touch the, ha the hair there. Be careful how you hold a violin now. Yep. All right, I'll just change Tony, the word Tony, you know. Tony, I'll subtract the two E's. trick, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. And what, you didn't even want my autograph at all. <laughs> you did not. You just wanted to play the violin. No, I didn't. I mean, why didn't you tell me you play the violin? You never asked me. <laughs> There's an answer, isn't it? I suppose everybody who asks me for an autograph, I got to say first, do you play the violin? <laughs> I must say one thing, though. You you sounded awfully good there for a little oh, girl. Thank you, Gosh. Mr. You must have studied quite a while. How long have you studied the violin? Oh, about three years. About three years, yes. gosh. Do you play like I do? I used to. <laughs> I wouldn't answer that if I had my writers with me. <laughs> Listen, as long as you played so well, would you like to do a little duet with me? Oh, I'd right? love to, Mr. Benny. Would you? Yes. Well, what? What could you play with me, I think? Well, I can play the number you and Giselle McKenzie used to do on your television show. You mean getting to know you? Yes. I used to watch you do it, and then I'd practice it. Oh, you mean the, the counter-melody That's part? That's it, yes. And you really can play the yes, counter-melody? Yes, I can play it. And you wouldn't be afraid if I got a violin? And a little bit, but I'd play it. You would, huh? Yes. Well, all right. If I get a violin, we'll play it then. You can play it by heart, don't you? Yes, it? all of it. Uh, Tommy, could I have the violin, please? Right here. Thank you. Now you can go back to town hall. Thank you. <laughs> You're not supposed to touch the hair. I know. I know. <laughs> All right, we'll play Getting to Know You. And I want to tell you something. It's only good when it's played 
straight and beautiful. It's a beautiful counter melody. You see, Giselle McKenzie used to show off with it and improvise and play a lot of things, extra notes and cadenzas, and she spoiled the whole number. It's only pretty, play it straight. Just nice okay. and straight, will you? Huh? Okay. You. Give me A, will you please? Thank you. A. That's fine. <laughs> To uh, Tommy. Honey, just play it straight. <laughs> lovely audience. I want them to hear this number played just once, the way it's supposed to be played. Would you do that for me, please? Okay. Okay, okay. Now, please, just straight, huh? Ready? <laughs> To blue. I'm beginning to sound like you. <laughs> Roses are red, carnations are white, and you are fired as of tonight. <laughs>
want to tell you something now about this little girl. Her right name is Cynthia O'Brien, and she comes from Sydney, Australia. And when I tell you, I never met her before in my life till about three weeks ago, a day after I arrived. And I must tell you, the kind of a gamble I took shows you the nerve I've got. I asked my representatives here, I said, I want you to find me a little girl in Sydney who can play the violin real good. She must be young and small, and she must be able to talk with me on the stage, and she must be an amateur. <laughs> How's that for finding somebody? And I swear, I swear that until the opening night at the theater in Sydney, she had never appeared in front of an audience in her life on the stage. So cute. Imagine 15 years old, gosh. She's 31 if she's a day. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that about winds up the show. And I want to say I had a wonderful, wonderful time here. I'm leaving tomorrow, and I think I deserve a medal of some kind, because here I did an entire television show in Australia and didn't do one joke about a kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know I deserve that. I wish we had time to go on and on and on, but I do want to thank uh, Johnny O'Keefe, Loray Desmond, the Rudenko brothers, and little Cynthia O'Brien, for being on the show, and, and I want to thank all of you folks for being here at this show and to, for coming to see me in the theater. And it's been the most delightful engagement, one of the most delightful three weeks I've ever had in my entire career in show business. Thank you. Very much.